How you doing guys? I'm Troy from Taylor Henny Penny. So representing all the fryers. So these are pressure fryers. They're both the same. They'll cook four head of chicken in each fryer. What time? 13 minutes. Drop your load, comes up, time goes off, four head of chicken all at one time. So the setup on this, we've, they're the same like I said. So we've got a manual here to be able to go through. If you need a quick reference, you can always refer to this. After today, if you think of uh, something you can't remember, you can always refer to this as uh, how to clean it, set, operate it, troubleshooting, all the steps are all listed right in here. Okay, so you have that to look through. All right, so a basic rundown of the machine. So you've got the pressure fryer lid that lifts up. It's all the chicken and the hot grease, everything. Obviously, your hot grease in there. It's cooked under pressure. You've got a few things up here that create the pressure. So when the lid is down and we've screwed the lid tight, as it's cooking, the moisture of the chicken is going to want to escape. When we turn this on and set the timer, a solenoid traps that moisture, the steam, inside the pot and the pressure begins to build. And the pressure will build up to a point where you'll see a gauge on the side. The pressure will build up into an area that is in a green zone. Green is still good. Roughly about 12 to 13 PSI, the pot builds pressure up to, and that's what cooks the chicken faster, juicier, more delicious, right? So it cooks under pressure that way. After the time expires, the solenoid opens and allows the steam to escape, and then that pressure, you'll see the gauge drop down to zero, and at that point, the pressure is removed from the lid, and you'll be able to open it up by unscrewing the latch, pressing down on the handle, and the lid rises again. It does have safety features on here, whereas if the lid is down and you're cooking under pressure, you will not be able to unscrew the handle. It has a little pin in the bottom of it that prevents you from turning it, so it's locked. Safety feature, so that way you won't be able to have the thing lift up if, if it does, somebody unscrewed it for some reason, or tried to, okay? Now there's a few cleaning things that we have to look for. In the back here is a dead weight. On the front of it, there's a decal that says, remove and clean this. Now it says daily, but you're only using it during your events, I'm sure, right? So during home stands or whatever, at the end of your use, you would just remove this cap. It has a little O-ring to help keep the pressure trapped in there. But this little piece here is what maintains that pressure built up and monitors it so it maintains the same pressure during all, uh, throughout the cook cycle, okay? So that little dead weight can form moisture and carbon over time. So it recommends that you clean this after each use to clean that moisture and carbon off from that passage. Okay, so that just simply goes back on there. All right, screw that back down. There it goes. It has a safety release on it. Should the pressure ever build up into the yellow, meaning for some reason there's an obstruction in the release of the solenoid from venting out after the cook cycle, if the pressure builds up so much, it will blow or discharge the pressure from this little safety valve. So that way it will never get into a situation where it's over pressurized and now what am I doing, you know, how do I get that pressure to escape to be able to raise the lid. So. That will discharge, or it also has just a manual pin that you can pull up and release. But just know that this would be hot, so use safety gloves and the goggles if, if that's the case. Okay, so to fill your fryer. Now we're gonna fill the fryer. Here's your basket. You're gonna fill the oil. So you're gonna have a box shortening. This will take one of these plus another quarter of a second box or bucket of oil to pour this in because the minimum fill line that we need is where this line is molded into the pot. There's a little fill line so that way when it's up to temperature you want to maintain oil up to that level at all times. The minimum amount to turn this on is this beveled edge where that line is. You need at least oil to that point because the 
When this ignites the gas, the whole pot begins to heat up, and if you don't have oil there to absorb the heat in all areas, the pot potentially could be damaged. So always make sure you maintain uh, oil level to that line, so that way uh, damage it doesn't occur to your fat. Okay. So the oil max line is the line on top. The oil and the edge is the minimum. The minimum, correct. So yep. minimum and maximum. Yeah. Okay. Try to keep it within that guide uh, bracket area there. If you overfill the pot with oil and you've got a basket full of chicken, when you set that down into the cook pot, the S, because if you have too much oil in there, the oil is going to come up and then overfill the pot and then end up, oil will go into the over splash fill and then that becomes a hazardous condition if you do that. So, so we're not going to, don't overfill the pot. On the other one, we've got oil in it already, so I'm going to unscrew this and show you oil in there, up to, basically up to the line. So now to retrieve the basket from there, there's a handle. This handle, by inserting it into the front of the basket, allows you to obviously lift it up. Now it has a curved area, if you grab actually up here and then use this as kind of a push down. It will lift up easily and it has hooks so you can set it there. So the handle just seems to secure more easily if you grip it with both hands rather than the one back here. It has the potential of falling off or falling out of the little hook that's at the bottom of it. So always maintain a grip of it in the front as well as the back. Okay, to, to take it out. Now, the controls up front. So, we've got your main power switch is located right here. Okay, so by turning the unit to the cook mode, that powers up the unit and it begins its little diagnostic and startup procedure. It just tells what model it is and now it'll go through an, igni uh, an ignition sequence. One, two, three. Three will flash until it actually sparks and ignites. So it's a gas burner that lights up. So now once it finally ignites, it'll go into what's a, called a melt mode. The melt mode gently heats the oil up so that way it's not just rapid heat thrown at that oil um, that'll prolong the life of your oil because it's gently gonna heat the burner so it's gonna cycle the flame on and off, on and off until it reaches 230 degrees and then it'll also then convert into the full cook cycle, which then it'll make it heat up all the way to our set point of 325 degrees. So at that point, so it currently is in melt mode. If you leave it go, if you come in for an event and turn it on, plan about a half hour's time worth of startup that before it's gonna be ready to cook. Now it does have a bypass that so you can exit out of the melt mode and goes directly into the full burn although it's not recommended but it it does scroll along the front saying hold the timer to exit from the melt mode so which the timer is either side there's a red circle with a clock that's your timer so simply by pressing holding it will then go into that full burn okay so on either side so it's warm enough at this point, I will go ahead. So turning it on. So once you exit the melt mode, now we're in full burn. But at that point, now your timers come up. So in this case, we've got it set for 13 minutes. Um, you have the ability to have a second timer to be able to, if you have other items, unless you're, you're doing things other than just bone cut up chicken or whatever your timer is that you're setting. But you have the ability to change your settings based on whatever product you're cooking. Just simply by, you can lower it by pushing down arrow, increase it by the up arrow. And set it to whatever. I just randomly picked seven and 13, but we'll have to cook chicken or whatever item is. And based on food safety, you can adjust your times off of that. Okay. Now the other, so you see the arrows up and down, timers left and right. 
only one basket, so only one timer will allow you. You can't have two timers running because there's only one cook pot, only one timer. So it's one or the other will engage whichever time selection you choose. So there is a moon symbol on here. That is a standby feature which allows the oil temperature to cool off during periods of not use or low volume sales. Say a restaurant would use that if they have a lunch hour and they would use it at that point and then now they don't serve chicken until dinner hour. So during those non-use operation times, they can allow that temperature of the oil to cool down to kind of a standby temperature of 250 degrees. And that way it saves the life of the oil, right? If it's not kept hot all the time, if you let it cool down. That feature is used I don't, I don't imagine you guys are going to use it here because when the event is on, you're going to be frying product, you know, one after another. So, but that's, I just wanted to point out what the moon symbol is, that it's a non-use um, selection that you could put on there if, if you did need at that point. Uh, program, that, that's the push P. If you do that, if you press it once, it'll display your current temperature. Press it again, it'll tell you your set point. 325, we'll just leave it right there. You don't want to adjust that ever. If your food safety, if you check your products and not coming up, adjust your time. Just leave the temperature where it should be at 325 and you won't, um, it'll, so it'll cook product. Always run 325, yep, for the products. Okay, all right, now, so once it gets up to temperature, it's gonna come up with a little light that will illuminate green, indicating it's ready to cook. So at that point, you could drop your product and then select whichever timer you have chosen for whichever product. Timer begins to count down. The solenoid will lock the pressure in. And see, so we don't have product today to test and be able to show you, but so what you would do is have your basket lowered, load your product. So if it's cut up chicken, you put your big pieces down first and then the small pieces. Shake the basket up a little to stir them in there, let them all settle down in the oil. Close the lid so it's latched, and then turn the handle all the way around so the red ball matches the red ball. So keep turning all the way, which is about two turns around, but we're going to turn it so it is, it is a tight fit, right? So it has to seal the pressure off. So you're going to turn it all the way so red ball matches red ball, and then you would just simply hit timer. Now in this case it's a warning saying we're not up to temp yet. Food safety wise it's not even going to allow um, or it alarms you to the fact that it's potentially not going to cook correctly because our ready light did not come on. So it does have that feature, the safety for food safety reasons. Is there a level of how much product uh, like, like as far as like how much chicken did it go in the basket? Like you know so how, I know it sounds like a dumb question but no. How full, the basket can How full can the basket go? Yeah. I mean, you can fill it right up to the top of the basket. So it's roughly, well, four head of chicken is what yeah. it's designed for. Okay. 32 pieces. So, but if you're doing just, say, drumsticks or wings, you know, they can, you can probably fill it up to that point, right? Yeah, to the basket. Just don't obviously overfill yeah, the just basket. Stacking it on top of each other? Yeah. Like, yeah. Bread it and everything. Bread them, yep, bread them and stack them in there. It um, doesn't stick. If, if the basket is out in there, when you drop the basket or the product down into the basket, the breading usually kind of cooks instantly. As soon as it hits that hot oil, usually it'll kind of gel itself on and it shouldn't stick. But that's also why we're going to shake the basket a little bit before we close the lid to prevent that all from, from sticking. Now, if you pack it too tight, of course, then it, then it may come up like a brick of <laughs> chicken. So. So you do need to have a little wiggle room in there for the pieces to move around and let them cook, right? So if, uh, if it's a solid mass. In your operations panel, it does say, say the times of what you should put certain products at, right? Correct, yeah. Yep, because recommended guideline temperatures um, for whichever products, uh, or not temperatures, but quantity and uh, time-wise. Yeah, that's all in the manual as well in the back. Okay, so that's the cooking. Now, filtering at the end of the day. Now, it's recommended if you're doing fresh, cut up bone-in chicken, you filter every three or four loads of chicken. Drop the oil, let it run through a filter, and then it returns back up. So the way we're gonna do that, 
I've still got the unit on just to be able to show you it does have a safety feature but when you filter it the power switch always needs to be off so down in your filter area you've got two handles the handle to the left is your drain so like I said, you always want that off, but it does have a safety feature in case you forget to turn the power switch off and you pull the handle, it's gonna come up with an error indicating, hey, we still have the unit on and you're trying to filter. It kills the flame and the power instantly, so it's a safety feature. So to filter, we're gonna turn the power switch off. Now you can take the handle and open that up. And then what's happening is the oil in the pot is just simply draining into a pan. So I'll pull this out of the way so you can see. The oil's just draining down into a pan down below, which I'll show you on this model. Now, if you have a buildup of a lot of crumbs, you can use a brush, such as this, to get down in the bottoms here and the sides of the pot and, and clean away any buildup of old breading or whatever product uh, is remaining in the pot because you want that to be as clean as possible as you're draining this out. To filter out all the crumbs. Okay, so and then again, that's hot oil and hot area, so you're going to need your safety gloves and goggles and safety items so that way you don't get burned or potentially burned from touching the side of the pot or any hot grease residue that might still be in there. So you're gonna use your safety equipment to do the filtering. Okay, so let's stick that over there. Now, the oil is located right now, it's down in the pan. So to filter this back up through, I'm gonna first close my drain handle, so that way when I pump it up, it's not it's gonna run right out. I'm gonna open up my other handle, which this is, a valve that allows the oil to flow through this pipe and flow back up into the pump. Now the reason that there is a handle and a little shut off is if you left that open or didn't close it from the last filter, if you were cooking chicken up here under pressure and that valve was open, the oil would push back through this drain return line and end up back in the pan. So by the time the cook cycle is finished, the oil probably would be returned back into your pan because it, it's under pressure, so it would go the path of least resistance rather than escape up through the chimney. The pressure would push it back into the pan. So this is a little shutoff valve that prevents the oil from escaping the pot when it's cooking under pressure. But we do need it open to be able to let that oil flow to return to the pot. So by having that open, we're just gonna select the pump switch. It's a rocker switch, you just push down. And then that now will bring the oil up through the hole, and then you'll see it begin to fill up in the pot. Okay, that's all it is. So you can see it's fairly, it's a quick process that it drains the oil, pumps it back up through and returns, and it'll fill it right back to the top without losing too much temperature of the oil itself. So this way, like I said, every three or four loads, it's recommended if you're doing chicken, to drain the oil down, pump it back up, and that way your oil will maintain a longer cook cycle. Uh, it'll look fresher longer, and the product tastes better, and looks better. You get more use. Is this the system the sheets in the actual? Yep, that's where we're going to next. So I was gonna show you how that works, how the cleaning at the end of the night or daily use or even <laughs> how it's going. Okay, so now it's drained. The end of the pan is empty, right? It's pulled up all the product because we're blowing bubbles up here. So when it blows bubbles, that means we've sucked the oil out of the bottom of the pan. So I don't want to leave that run for an extended time uh, to oxygenate the oil. So I'm going to turn that pump off and then close our valve handle again to prevent that oil from leaking back out when we have our uh, cook cycle going on. Okay, so then at that point, it's ready to be turned back on because our oil level is returned up to that line or close to that line. And as oil heats, it expands a little bit, right? So if we are a little bit short of that line, 
when it's fully up to temperature, it may swell up a little bit to get to that level. So, so by now turning on that switch, so it goes. As far as filtering that, because mm -hmm. for us, probably three to four runs is not feasible, especially in concessions, okay. um, where we're going to have an hour's worth of doors doing six to 10 baskets, however, whatever the case may be. How, right. Is it bad for the system or are we really going to have to run these every three to four loads? It's recommended, but what you guys choose to do as far as your timeline and getting product in and out on a timely basis, I mean, it's just realize the longer that you, or the more batches you do without filtering, the more sediment or breading that may fall off and end up in the bottom of the, you'll have crumbs in the bottom of your, your okay. fry mat. And that's gonna obviously it, and have more cleaning at the end of the night, or at the end of the sweep that out. So, right, you can use scraper tool or a variety of brushes that are available. So, okay. yep. A lot of people have so, to do, and we'll talk about this offline. We'll just create an SOP like it filters at once right before, um, you know, shortly after games, and then one right after the game starts, and then one right before halftime, something like that. Sure. There you go. Yeah. You get the most use and try to find your times when you, you get a few minutes. As you can see, it it drops oil, it returns it back up, and it's hot and ready to cook under five minutes. So it's a fairly quick return and recovery. Yeah. So it goes. Right. Yep. With two fryers, you're able to use one and, and the other one. So now to show you some of the end of the night, or at least before your event starts. In the filter pan, they asked about changing, is there a filter paper that we have to take out? Yes. Now, as it's cooking, the moisture that is cooked out of the chicken, some of the steam will escape up the stack. The rest of it will condense, and you'll have condensation that drips through this tube into this pan. So this is a condensation pan that will have, after you, you'll find probably by the end of the night, that you'll have considerable amount of water in there that we'll just have to take and dump this out after each event or each night. Okay, so that pan is in front. Now the filter pan is loosened up by unscrewing the little wing nut that's on here. So this little hand wing nut, just unscrew that. And then that allows the pipe to separate in this whole pan by grabbing the handle. Just pulls right out. Okay, our filter, it's a splash cover that when you are filtering, it goes out through the hole and it prevents it from splattering all over the place. So we have the splash cover. And here's your filter. So the filter has a metal crumb catcher, is what it is. So to take this off, this pipe just simply unscrews. So you just spin that off. And then this we can clean also. Now, no, um, none of these parts should touch soapy water or dishwasher. If if soap does come in contact with any of these parts, then you want to go back and re-neutralize with a vinegar water solution, because otherwise your fresh oil that you put in here will be destroyed by the, the cleaning chemicals or the soapy water that you had put it in. So you'll have fresh oil that is no longer any good because soap got to it. So, so just. Uh, hand wipe them out if you have towels or a sink with a spray nozzle you can always spray that through so water you know just straight water is fine in there but you know shake it off and dry it so that way there's no water residue obviously water and oil don't mix either right so no soap and then if you have water in a pan dry that off as well okay so we have a filter pan and then once we've unscrewed that this crumb catcher comes off and it's got a lip on it to hold your crumbs so you can walk over to your wastebasket and shake out any breading crumbs that might be on it. Okay, you can clean and wipe that off as well. And then here is your filter screen. So this has an envelope, which is, let just grab behind you here. Here's one of the replacement ones. So you can see it's just an envelope with a hole in it. So this is something before each event or day that you're operating to change this out and start fresh with a new filter paper each day. Um, this has clips that hold that little paper envelope down 
from allowing crumbs to enter through there because if you forgot to fold it over, crumbs would slip on in and then pump up through the pump system and end up back in your pot or clog up your whole tubing and, and pump assembly. Now, if you do get a blockage or a buildup in your pump, the pump motor will have a reset button on it so that way if it ever doesn't operate, if you turn the pump switch on, you don't hear the motor run or any kind of operation. On the back of the fryer is the motor and there's a red reset button. You just push the button and that will restart or allow the motor to restart up. But just recognize that if it did trip the reset button, it's because of a blockage probably. So then you'll want to take it apart, um, your filter apart, check the tubes and find out why the motor tripped to begin with because otherwise it'll just trip again, right? So. So this prevents those crumbs from getting in there by folding over the ends. Okay, and then this screen just slides right out. Okay, so you just have a filter screen here that, again, you can take and spray this off, shake it out to get the water back out. Usually if you do this at the end of the vent and ready for the next event, this is already dried and ready to go for the next use. So, and then, and then replace your filter with a new one again. So this just slides back on. All right, and then the corners and the clips hold the ends on. There we go, like so. And then the crumb catcher again goes back on. No, it doesn't go this way. Some people think with the lip on it, the box has to go down that way but it actually is the other way around. If you did put it on backwards, the threads of that wouldn't allow you to start it. So you just have to put it that way, and then this will allow you now to put this on. Now, when you're putting on this little tube, make sure that it's if it's still loose, oil is gonna get sucked up through here rather than through the bottom of the filter screen where you need it to actually do the filtering job. So, if, and then, Another bad thing that would happen is that it would begin to suck bubbles in before you actually sucked all the oil out of the bottom of the pan, so you would end up with quite a bit of oil left in your oil pan. So this needs to be all the way tight, so that way it does draw it up now through the bottom of the filter and actually clean and filter the oil. Okay, so tighten that all the way down, and then a little splash cover goes on. And then, of course, this slides right back in. Okay, and then just match up the end and the wing nut. This just threads on. And this also, you want to make it tight, because if you don't have that tight enough, it's not going to create a suction to draw the oil up through it. And then it would also drip and leak from here, right? So just make sure that that's tight there as well. Okay, and a little condensation pan. Now, if you turn this on without any oil in it, or if the oil level starts getting too low, it does have a safety feature of a high limit, a high temperature cutout. And like I said, for that scenario, if, if that happens, it will trip a reset. And the reset button is a little red push button down below the bottom of the fryer above this handle. So if you put your hand here and turn it upward, if you lift up, you'll find or feel a little push button, a little red reset button. So that clicking that will reset that unit to be able to refire the, the, the burner to make it go. So if you ever turn this on and it doesn't start up, check and see if it's out on reset because that may have occurred. But again, if it tripped the reset, there's a reason for it. So check your oil level, check to see if you've got any uh, scenario that would cause it to overheat because that would make that trip. So solve those problems first. All right, so on the other unit here, you can see our fryer is up to temperature. The green lights are on. So that indicates that you're now able to load your product, select whichever timer, and begin, begin cooking on that. Okay, so the green ready lights. All right. Um, any questions here that I've, yeah. And to change the grease, we have to pick the pan up and dump it in a bucket? In order to change your grease? Yeah, there's uh No, no, not for us. We're not using for us. It for We're going to 
um, RTI system. So you do have RTI coming. Yeah. Okay. So Great. that's going to be that connector right there. So this connector, yep, I was, I was going to ask you about that. Very good. Thank you for answering that. So this has a quick disconnect button on here. So you just simply connect your RTI disposal hose up to that little quick disconnect. And then when you turn on the pump switch, it'll pump it through that hose rather than allowing it to return to your pot. So that's on the day of disposal. So that's what you would do those. So great question. Yes. You might have said it and I didn't hear you. So you said if you turn the handle and the timer is still going, it won't let you unturn it. Correct. Right? Yeah, Until the timer. But if you don't have it closed completely tight enough, will the timer start? The timer will still continue to start, but you won't be able to loosen the handle still. Well, what or, I'm saying is if you don't have the right handle lined up to the right knob. Right. So it's not down tight enough. If, will the working process start? Yes, it still will. Yeah, unfortunately. And that's when they tend to explode? Well, or, yeah. It would pressure. start to build pressure. It does, have, it does have that safety feature where if somebody forgot to screw this down, the lid latch adjustment requires you to actually push down first to release the little hook from the latch. So if it was under pressure, you wouldn't be able to push that down because the pressure would be holding it up. And then the steam would be escaping through the, the gasket here. So it would just be venting out of there so much to that be able to show you it didn't create. Is there a way to stop the timer process? And I might have missed that. Yeah, no, you can simply, by, by pressing the timer, it starts and that Click you heard is a solenoid engaging, trapping pressure. But if you wanted to cancel it, just simply push and hold it again, and that clears it back out again. Okay, and it also um, activates or deactivates the solenoid to let the steam escape, so that way you could unscrew the lid okay. to remove it. Yeah. So good question. Um, is there an emergency shutoff for this? Emergency shutoff, other than just the power switch. Um, or unplug it from the back, so it does have just a 110 outlet unplug it, and the gas valve is located also directly behind it, shut off for that, and then on your hood, you have uh, um, the Ansel system. No, correct, no, just in an emergency, you were saying, in case a fire or something happened. Oh, really? Okay. It's not the machine's fault. Right. Some of the operators and haven't been right. So there is uh, the Ansel system shutoffs, gas line um, shut off of the course, and electrically unplug it, and power switch here as well. So.